Now, one of the most interesting bits of information that came out of this meeting is that it took a lot of time for city officials to respond after finding out about the positive E. coli tests. The Safe Drinking Water Act, which has been a federal law since 1974, requires officials to notify the public about unsafe drinking water within 24 hours. As you can see, it took more than 31 hours and second positive test results for city officials to actually order a boil water advisory. WJC is live and staying on top of the story for you. Paul Gessler is at City Hall tonight explaining how Mayor Scott responded to the criticisms today. Paul. Yeah, city officials saying they posted on the popular app next door and on Twitter. They went door to door in the many affected area, but it did take that long, more than a day, to notify the greater public, the tens of thousands affected by that precautionary boil water advisory. Vic and Rick, the mayor used a football metaphor in defense of his administration's handling of this water crisis. Even Tom Brady loses games, he said, arguing they met every requirement, but some in the public and here on city council remain critical. I learned a lot of lessons as a director in this being my first emergency here in Baltimore City. Public Works Director Jason Mitchell admitted his agency needed to do better after its response to multiple positive E. coli tests in West Baltimore over Labor Day weekend. And the communication, as far as I'm concerned, was completely abysmal. We're always going to be looking at ways to improve. The councilman can have whatever opinion that he wants to have. Councilman Eric Costello pointed Mitchell to the Safe Drinking Water Act, requiring public notification of unsafe drinking water within 24 hours. It took more than 30 one hours after a second positive test before a boil water advisory was ultimately issued. DPW was in violation of the requirements to provide notification. And frankly, I'm disgusted on how those first 24 hours were, was handled. DPW lacked transparency. We did struggle the first 24 hours. We struggled. We needed help. It's like they could care less if we drank the water out the faucets or not. Some spent days drinking potentially contaminated water after that second positive test. After initially distributing gallons of water, the city moved to cases of bottled water. We did not find out until late Monday evening after we had drinking the water. The mayor's office took over communications after the emergency operations center was activated, but that wasn't until Monday night. We met every single requirement. What we're talking about now is exceeding those requirements and being better. Health officials say they don't know of anyone who's gotten sick from drinking the water. DPW is still investigating the source of the contamination. The director says changes to its communications team are coming next month, and water testing results will be published monthly. Now, we just got an email back from the communications office with Mayor Brandon Scott. They say DPW maintains they are in compliance with federal law when it comes to notifying the public. They also tell me that a new DPW communications director is expected to start in mid-October. It's also in October that results of those water testing will be posted monthly. For now, reporting live outside City Hall at 6, I'm Paul Gessler for WJZ.